Hello and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today I'm going to be comparing Copic markers with Winsor & Newton brush markers. Both contain alcohol-based ink and both feature a thick and flexible brush nib, but there are some pointed differences too, so we'll be going through those in detail. The main focus of this video is to find out whether or not the Winsor & Newton stand up to the very expensive and popular Copic, which would give you a much more affordable option with the same performance, hopefully. We'll see how we go. So first of all, we'll have a look at the pens themselves. Winsor & Newton have two types of alcohol marker. They have the Pro marker, this one here, and the brush marker. We'll be concentrating on the brush marker today as it's more of a comparative product to the Copic, but I'll talk a little bit about both. The Pro Marker comes in a total of 148 colours and it features a firm bullet nib that is great for precision colouring but not so good for filling larger spaces. The Brush Marker comes in 72 colours and has the beautifully pliable brush nib as well as the chisel on the other end. Neither the Pro or the Brush Markers from Winsor & Newton are refillable. We then move over to Copic which have the Sketch and the Chow markers. Now the Sketch is the most expensive of the two as it holds more ink than the Chow and it comes in a whopping 358 colours. Chow markers however are forever limited to 180 colours as any new colours bought out in the future are only going to be added to the Sketch selection, not the Chow. Both the Sketch and the Chow are refillable and nib changeable, so you can effectively buy one marker and keep it forever. Just refill the ink and change the nibs as needed, and that makes the Copics a really economical choice. There's also some physical differences between the two. Most notably, the Sketch has an oval shaped barrel with the colour name and number uh, on the ends, whereas the Chow has a rounded barrel with the colour number on the barrel itself. Now Copic have a very comprehensive number and letter system which allows you to easily find colours that blend perfectly together. It might look confusing at first but it's easy to understand when you know what the code means. So let's take a look at this one as an example. Each colour has a letter or two letters at the start and then two numbers. Now this one has BG at the start which stands for our colour family and this means blue-green. So we are in the blue-green colour family. The next two numbers are completely separate to one another and have totally different meanings. The first number tells you the level of saturation in the colour. Saturation meaning how much grey is in there. So this one being zero tells us that the colour has no grey at all and it's a pure blue-green. Now if that number was five, that would mean the colour contained 50% grey. And if it was at the maximum of nine, that would mean 90% grey, 10% blue-green. A colour with such a high concentration of grey would look very dull and washed out, whereas colours with barely any grey are a lot more vivid and intense. The last number tells us the brightness of the colour, so the lower the number, the brighter the ink will be. This one's a number 9, so the highest you can get, and that means this colour will be very, very dark. You can see why professional artists would favour Copic. If they wanted to draw, for example, a red apple, they'd be able to choose a selection of reds in varying brightness and saturation to create the look of an apple that shines on one side and is in deep shadow at the other. Staying within the same colour family pretty much guarantees a great blend between colours. Now the Winsor & Newton have a very similar approach to labelling their colours albeit there is a lot less colours available, so it's not going to be as perfect uh, with blends as the Copic. So the first letter is, just like the Copic, indicative of the colour family, so Y for yellow. The next number tells you what hue that yellow is. So we know there can be very orangey yellows and very green yellows, so the lower this number, the more it leans to the orange side, the higher the number, the more it leans to the green side. If it was in the middle, it would be a number five, the purest yellow with neither orange or green tones. So this one is a one that tells us it's far onto the orange side of yellow than the green. The next number tells us the saturation. Remember the amount of grey that's in the colour, so whether it's dull or vivid. And the last number indicates the brightness, so how light or dark the colour is. Both the Copic and the Winsor Newton have a great system for labelling their colours, but as I said, the Copic edges in front on this because of the sheer amount of colours you have to work with. The more in-between shades you have, the more seamless the blend from light to dark. Now let's have a look at those brush nibs. 
So they look almost identical, but there are some slight differences. The Copic brush has a length of 11 millimeters and the Windsor is 12 millimeters, so a fraction longer. Uh, they feel quite different to use. Um, the Copic feels much more rigid and um, more in control than the Windsor. The Windsor seems a little bit more freestyle, um, but it's something you feel rather than see so it's difficult to demonstrate on video but I think um, the flexible brush on the brush markers is just a little bit too bendy to have good control over whereas the rigidity of the Copic gives you a lot more control of where your brush um, goes. As for the ink itself, I can find no major difference between the two. Both of them are highly translucent, meaning that you can layer the same colour from light to dark and you can overlay colours to create new ones like this. So if I get the, uh, let's go for the pink with the Copic and I'm going to put a couple of stripes of pink across here. I'm then going to take that blue green and do a couple of crosshatch stripes over like that and if I zoom in just a little you can see that where they have crossed over and intersected it is a completely different colour to either the ones that we've used and the more you go over it the darker it gets so very very translucent inks now I can do exactly the same experiment with the Windsor and Newton brush markers so let's get the ocean teal and the wild orchid We'll do exactly the same thing, just making sure I am on screen for you. So we'll take that one and overlay the ocean teal on top and you can see that they have created this new colour which gets darker as you layer. So very translucent inks, great for building up the colour rather than having it completely saturated on the first stroke. So let's try a bit of blending now. Um, I don't have a huge range of either brand. No matter how much I stare at the big Copic sets on my wish list, they just never seem to magically buy themselves, unfortunately. Um, now then, I have two Copic greens here, but they are from different families. This is YG and G, so yellow, green and green. So we can't expect the best blend, but we'll see what we can do. Now, making sure again that I am on screen for you. This is quite difficult because my um, paper pad keeps flipping over on itself so I'm hoping it's not going to do that this time so I'm going to take the darker of the two and let's try and do a kind of spherical shape so we'll do a C with the darkest colour C for colour with Claire why not uh, make it nice and tapered at the ends then we will get the lighter of the colours finish off the circle and fill it in so already you can see where I'm going over the darker green it is starting to blend and merge with each other as I said they're not in the same colour family so we're not expecting miracles here but I think that is a pretty good example already of how these blend together you can always go in and add more of the darker colour bring it in again and always blend out with your lightest colour. So going over that line where the two meet, and we've got quite a nice little sphere there. It's not as good as a lot of people can do and not as good as I could do if I had two matching kind of colours in the same family, but it's still pretty good. Now let's try the same thing with the Windsor & Newton brush markers. So as I said, they're both in different families, so this is a comparative comparison. <laughs> um, so we've got here the Saddle Brown and the Sunflower. These are in the, the O, which I believe might be Ochre, and the Yellow colour families. So exactly the same thing again. Going to take the brush marker, do a little C with the darker colour. And then the Sunflower. We will fill in the rest of the circle and see how these blend together. Now the paper that I'm using, in case you're wondering, is a special marker paper from Spectrum Noir. It costs about £10 per pad and it's specifically made for using alcohol markers on so it doesn't bleed through to the other side and you, you have that nice smooth surface for the alcohol to um, blend in together. So just add in again, 
exactly the same as we did on Copic, trying to make it as comparative as possible. And blending in with our lighter colour straight over the darker. So you can see the lines, the black lines from the uh, image that's on the other side of this marker paper. Don't worry about that because once the alcohol evaporates, you won't be able to see anything through to the other side. Um, so I'm thinking that that is actually, even though I've gone over the line there, actually a very, very similar kind of blend. So let's move on to the price of each. Now the Copic are well known as being incredibly expensive markers. So you're looking at about £35 for a set of 12 uh, and about £27 for a set of 12 brush markers. My advice would be, as always, to try a couple of each brand open stock before you invest in any of the sets. So you can see how you like them as artist materials. Um, they're very personal, I think, so what one person loves might not work for another. Both Copic and Windsor are similar in price for the open stock at just under £3 per pen. So this is definitely the thing to do if you don't want to shell out loads on sets straight away. Because the larger the Copic set, the more drastically the price increases over the brush markers. Overall, I would say that the Copics have to win out for the sheer amount of colours they have. But as for the performance, um, I can't see too much of a difference between either. They're both incredibly saturated inks. Um, they have a high level of translucency so you can build up the colour. There isn't any real difference between them whatsoever that I can see when using them. Obviously, my little sphere that I did here has gone a bit haywire because they are completely different colours. It's not like having the two greens in the Copic. I've got a yellow and a brown. So it was never going to work out pretty well. But um, I think having used them both in different colouring pages and things, they are both really comparative to one another. And the only difference is if you're wanting to refill you cannot do that with the Windsor and Newton you can only do that with the Copic so that might be the deal breaker for some now I'm going to be leaving links in the description for the uh, Copics and the brush markers you can get them all open stock from cult pens really good place to buy from you get free delivery if it's over a tenner I think don't quote me on that um and they they have as I say open stock and sets of both the Copic and the Windsor and Newton so huge range to choose from depending on your needs they have both the pro and the brush markers and both the Copic sketch and the chow so I really hope you've enjoyed looking at a bit of a comparison between these two I'd like you to let me know in the comments your opinion and if you think the brush markers are better than the Copic picks or vice versa and uh, if you're going to try them out do let me know as well please give this video a thumbs up because it makes my videos more visible to more people and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon on color with claire